Hey Unity Crowd, nice to have you again. Here goes a quick tips and techniques video on how to properly prepare your SVG art to be imported into Unity Ray Spline Vectors using Ray's tools. So, first thing is to understand some basics about vectors and how does that impact the creation of your shapes inside Unity using Ray Spline. So, um, let's check this art here. For example, this hair piece here. Apparently it's just fine, but it's not ideal for ray spline. Suppose you convert this point here to corner type. I'm using Illustrator by the way just because it's the program that I have more proficiency with, but the same techniques that I'm going to show here uh, apply just the same side in Escape. You probably just change one menu or two, but it's basically the same approach. And we will use Escape for a couple of things throughout the video. Right? So, Suppose you do that, and uh, this point here, you make it, you know, just a regular corner point, just a beak kind of point. This is what your shape will look like inside Ray Spline when you have your vertex density, as we call it, within Ray's tools, when you set that to zero. That's basically how your shape's going to look in its worst case. Like, uh, if you use Edge Tune for dynamically subdividing your curvature, which is very a very cool feature of Rage Tools. When the shape is really small on screen, relatively to the whole screen size, of course, you get this thing quite faced. So it's very important to understand that the point placement truly defines your shape. Okay, so this is not critical generally, but it's something to keep in mind that, for instance, uh, if you have a curvature like this one, okay, and I convert this to two corners and I just reduce the tangent size to zero. Now you're suddenly seeing uh, the head behind it. Okay, so that's probably not what you want. And it's very simple to make sure that it never goes that bad. All you have to do is add a single extra point here. Because now um, if you imagine these guys as uh, at its lowest subdivision level, this is going to become a line, and at least it doesn't show the head. Of course, like I said, this is only going to happen when this is really small on screen, so it's not uh, that, that desperate or anything, but something to to keep in mind. Okay, so I'll just undo that, and uh, I'll show you really quick the two that I use the most within Illustrator. It's called Pathscribe. It's not an expensive extension for Illustrator, it's, it's quite affordable. And if you use Illustrator regularly, I highly recommend it. I think I, I can't recommend it more because it, is, it really makes a world of difference. So with Pathscribe, you gain a couple of tools here on the toolbar. And one of them, which is the main Pathscribe tool, um, you can simply alt-click whatever you want to, to add a point in any segment of your shape. And it's highly recommended that you have points at the extremes of your curvature just so that you don't lose that much volume as this gets its subdivision reduced. So I'd probably for the shape is something here, an extra vertex here, and I mean an extra point here. So um, same thing here. You're probably guessing, well but that's that's too much work to just you know flatten everything um, to see how bad it can get, let's let's put it like that, uh, within Unity, but not using Pathscribe. You can simply select all your points, and a quick way to do that is just select the shape, and with Selection 2, then switch into to the Direct Selection tool, and um, you basically select all the points at once. And then you can simply use this button here to retract handles, and now you're seeing exactly how your shape is going to look like in its lowest division level. I would definitely recommend for this specific shape to add a couple more. Uh, for instance here, just keeping this, this gap here like so. Um, this way you, you, you gain more definition in this curve. And I'd probably do the same here, just keeping this somewhat parallel to better preserve the volume once again. Uh, then another point here, probably. This is going to become a line, so it's no problem. This is a line that's reasonable. But now I'm, I'm getting the situation here that I have too many points. 
I would really like to remove this point here. So if you use the default Illustrator way to do that, which using this guy here that I've just expanded um, into this sub menu here, I can simply select the lead anchor point two and click on it. But then I have a problem. You see that my curvature has changed. It has lost volume, and that's exactly what I don't want. So generally, people that use uh, Illustrator have to resort to manually uh, tweak this curve, you know, to to regain that that lost volume. But it's never the same as the original. Some people duplicate the shape, you know, move it behind in, in the ordering, so um, and change the color so you can see the previous volume. Then they use the, the snapping system of Illustrator to to make this more precise but it's much much more convenient when you can simply remove the point and keep the curvature the same which it's absolutely possible here since it's just a, a regular C like shape uh, as, you're, as you're probably aware anything that has a, a C like shape uh, you know with a regular contiguous curve or that makes an S kind of uh, kind of shape can be represented with just two points. So um, I, I'll just remove this guy, but this time I'm going to use Path Scribe 2 for that. So I simply select the Path Scribe tool, I click the, the guy that I want to remove, and then I can either click the Smart Remove Point button or I use the shortcut Close Brackets. And you see that it removes the point and keeps the curvature. That's absolutely invaluable. Okay, so just for consistency sake, I just add an extra point here and another one here, just alt clicking. And now I can safely select all points. Let me just select the shape again. So it selects all points and I just click on the retract handles button and you see that it's much, much more preserved. The shape is much more like the original. Okay, so I would probably add a couple points here if I'm really careful about preserving the shape, but uh, for this demonstration purpose, this is sufficient for you to understand the process. Okay. Another situation that you must be aware of is that close points like this are not good for a spline subdivision algorithm. Okay, so uh, try to avoid that at all costs. Like um, this guy here, I'd probably simply add an extra point, probably in the middle, and then it would remove the other two guys using path scribe just to preserve the curvature uh, as well as possible. Uh, one thing definitely worth mentioning is that uh, if you use Inkscape, it's point removal to, you know, simply selecting the point and removing it by hitting delete or backspace. It does try to preserve the curvature, something that Illustrator doesn't do by default. It doesn't do as good a job as um, that's path crime in my personal experience, but well, it's free <laughs> and it, it does a good job. It, it's decent, so um, definitely recommend it if you want to clean up shapes and you can't afford path crime that you go for Inkscape, definitely. Okay, so you see that I'm quickly removing a couple of points here. I'm evaluating if it's uh, if it's a good idea to have a point here or just add another one here and get rid of this one. It's probably what I'm gonna do. So, yeah. So you, you go merely around, just um, defining what curves you want to preserve as well as possible. And the main thing to keep in mind um, at the end of the day is that the more points you have, the more polygons you have. So try to keep your point count as small as possible, especially if you're developing for mobile devices, that's a definitely important concern. Okay, another nice example of that, when you're using booleans, uh, generally you get uh, a really dense point setup like this, and this is very bad. It's like um, you're multiplying by your vertex density every segment which this area between every two points. Okay, so um, you really have to try and clean up this as well as possible. One way you can try to do that in a more automated way is using the path simplify commands, which are present in both Adobe Illustrator and Inkscape. Okay, in Inkscape, it's simply path simplify, the name of the command. So um, if I click here, 
you you can turn on the preview to see how much it's degrading your shape. Oh, yeah, of course I have everything selected. Let me just select this one guy and group everything or isolate whatever. And now I'm gonna run again the path simplify command. Turn on the preview. See how much is degrading it. You most usually want this pretty high. Okay, the curve precision, and you see that it does a pretty good job reducing these points while preserving the curvature as well as possible. Okay, and that's the angle of tolerance. So you can play with these guys. You can you can use straight lines also if you want to slice your shape that way. Okay, you can compare with the original so that you can see where it has moved the points. Pretty handy, and you have similar functionality in Inkscape, like I said. So that's one way to do it but as you can see here um, you can end up with gaps okay and that's because this was composed using a vector boolean operation so that you've got those uh, those edges created the same way for both sides okay so and that brings us to the point that you shouldn't uh, do that. You, you have to try and avoid that as much as possible because suppose this guy is going to be the top one. I mean, this is going to be above all shapes. You do not need this kind of definition here at all. It could be a block, you know, like just a rectangle behind the, the darker green shape and you'd get absolutely the same result uh, with much, much lower poly count. So, just so you know what I'm talking about, this is the final processing art and I'll show you what it did. So you can see here that the, the dark green shape has just a single line connecting both sides. Okay, while uh, the, the lighter green shape, of course, defines the separation between the shaded area and the flat area. Okay, so that's a much better approach, which I really recommend. You see, for instance, here uh, the lighter green shape it's got just a, a single segment just a, a straight line connecting these two areas because you simply do not need to replicate this shade again and this other part you can see um, that I have parts that were separate probably due to some um, boolean operation carried out by the original artist so it's very important to to join this uh, using in the case of illustrator the pathfinder unite in Inkscape, you can simply use the boolean add. Okay, so um, uh, again, I'm using um, this shape for instance. You see that it's cut out for both sides. It's got this segment definition on both sides of the, the brown color. And here you can see that the lighter one, which is behind the darker uh, brown shade, I simply did a, uh, an extra point, you know, and with just straight segment. Uh, because I couldn't use a simple line here. If you check this out, you see why. Okay, because I would lose this this part of the lighter brown shade. Okay, so just a couple of tricks in this video, and we're gonna follow up in the next one.